Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk Radio. It's that time of the day, of course. It's just after the news at 12.30, so it is time for homeschooling. We've been doing this for the best part of the last several weeks because uh, we started off, I suppose, uh, back at the back end of uh, March, and we do it every single day. Uh, we've been learning all sorts of amazing things. Yesterday, we did a thing about clouds. Uh, we've done stuff about the weather. We've done things about maths, and I'm delighted to say we are welcoming back uh, Dr. Jamie Frost, maths teacher, finalist for the Global Teacher Prize 2020. Uh, he is from, of course, drfrostmaths.com. And uh, Jamie, a welcome back to uh, the Independent Republic. Uh, thank you for having me back. No, listen, we love you so much that we, you can teach us so many things. I'm now going to do something that I've never done before, uh, which is to introduce a word called bidmus, um, which until this morning I hadn't heard of at all. Um, but apparently it stands for brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. And already, I'm afraid to say, Jamie, this has caused some consternation in the office because I was given an <laughs> equation earlier to solve, which I thought I'd solved. And apparently I'm told I didn't solve it right. Well, no, there's this, there's, it's not really debatable as such, but even my, I was talking with my dad about it the other day and he was, <laughs> we had the argument, what is one plus one times two? Right. And he's absolutely insistent that it is four. Right. Um, and he's saying, I don't care about your PhD. I know I'm right because that's how I was taught it at school. Right. So uh, it's quite, quite a hot topic, but there, there is very much a, a set way of doing these things, which we're going to go through. Right. Um, just to give you some intro into this, if I was to say, let's go to English actually. So if I was to say, um, I saw the monkey with my binoculars, how would you interpret that sentence? Um, uh, how do you mean? I'd, I'd assume that you saw a, a, a monkey quite far away by looking through some binoculars. Sure, but there, there's actually a second interpretation. It could be that some monkey stolen your binoculars and you saw the monkey with your binoculars. Oh, I see. Sense. Okay. Right. Well, I suppose so, that depends on what sort of a, a, a crime-ridden place you live in, if the monkeys go around stealing binoculars. Yeah, so it, it, you can see there's some, a degree of ambiguity. Yes. And there's two things going on here. We've got syntax and semantics. Right. So syntax is ha like effectively the grammar. So how are words in the English language allowed to come together? And both of those interpretations are syntactically, they're grammatically valid. They're both valid, um, but one is probably more semantically plausible than the other. And semantics yeah. just means the meaning. How do we interpret the, the actual words? Yes. Um, now, with maths, we don't want that kind of ambiguity. With an expression like one plus one times two, we want there to be a set way that we actually interpret that expression so that if we were to put it into a calculator or a computer, we know how the computer or the calculator is going to evaluate that. And that's why we have to have these rules, a grammar, if you like, which, as you correctly described, is called bidness. And that's basically the order in which you do the various things in expression. So I've, I've conveniently written it here for you. And I understand that, well, obviously your listeners won't be able to see this, but at least you will be able to see it. Well, the people so, watching YouTube can see it, don't worry. That's true. So bidness, as you correctly said, we've got brackets in the top. And right. that means if you see brackets in expression, you have to do that first. So I've right. written the top, do you first. Um, and then as we go down, uh, indices, that's just a posh word for powers. So things like squared, cubed, to the power of that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah? Right. And then on the next level, we've got um, division and multiplication. So if we see any divisions or multiplications, we do those next. And then finally, at the very bottom, we've got addition and subtraction. So those are things that we do last. Right. Yep. Okay. So, so you see, with me, with my, with my English for me is, a, is much more my subject than maths is, right? So quite often... Um, those sentences that you, that one sentence that you talked about, the monkey in the binoculars, quite often that can be changed depending upon the punctuation and depending upon the grammar, as you said. Um, so this is, in a way, I'm assuming, the kind of grammar for maths, is it? Oh, absolutely. And because I, I was in an area called computational linguistics, which right. is how we can sort of use maths for tasks in like the English language, like how do we translate between languages? How do we try and assimilate the grammar of a language just using some books we found in that language and, right. and things like that? So very much the, the rules we apply to the English language also apply to mathematical expressions. So exactly the same kind of logic behind it, which is really cool, I think. And it means we can write the same algorithms, just like for predictive text and stuff to actually also interpret mathematical expressions. So it's really cool in that way. All right, because I've got a, a sum here, right? And the question I was given, and it has no brackets, it has no punctuation as such mathematically. 13 minus three times four plus two, right? Now, Yeah, and in fact, let's see, I was pre-warned that question. So well, um, I've written- Oh, you've got it there. Yeah, top so we'll, we'll probably start, we'll start with the easy ones. We've got the top, right. um, one plus one times two. At the top there. one plus one times two well i think i'm with your dad on this one i mean isn't that four 
Well, it's not because the thing is, if we look at our business, we've got, um, we can see that, uh, what have we got in this expression? We've got a multiplication, right. we've got that time there, and then we've got that addition as well. Right. So we don't necessarily do it left to right. Just like with the monkey, right. my, we don't necessarily interpret the sentence left to right. You see what you group together first. It might be the monkey with the binoculars that gets mm. grouped together first. Oh, okay. So, if we look so, at you business, go, so you go two times one first. That's correct. So multiplication and division always comes first in this expression. Right. So um, we can see the time. So we do the one times two, you're correct, which is two. Right. And then we next do the addition. So we've now got the one plus that one times two. Yes. So it's one plus two, which is three. Right. So so um, am, am I going to be too premature if I jump to the other one that we mentioned, 13 minus three times four plus two? Sure, so, go ahead. Go try so, it. so then we should presumably multiply four times three first, right? Correct. Which gives exactly. 12. So it's 13 minus 12, yep. which is one plus two. Yep. And the answer is three. That's correct. You see? That's very good. You well see, done. I said that, right? And I was told by the woman who set this up that it was 42. And I, no, no, and no. I declared her to be a, a dunce on that basis. <laughs> But she's from actually, Sheffield. <laughs> um, but there's actually some, even people who think they know business often get it wrong. Now, yeah. you've got it right because you're that smart. But um, what people might do, can you see the one above where I've got 10 minus 2 plus 3? Can Hang you on, see that me, one? I can't, but let me write it down. 10 minus 2 plus 3. Okay. Now, it'll be interesting to see what you think the answer to that one is. Okay, so it looks to me as though addition is above subtraction. So then you add ah. 2 plus 3, right? Uh, which is five. So the answer was, would be 10 minus five, which is five. So that, that's actually a misconception. So that, that's what a lot of people think. They think that because, well, in business, um, they think that uh, just because of the order of the letters that they do additions before subtraction. Yeah. But can you see that I've intentionally written the A and the S on the same line? So I've got B at the top, yeah. then I below that, then D and M below that, and then A and S below that. And basically, that there's no rule that says you should do addition before subtraction. They're kind of the same order priority. Really? So if you see them, you basically, you just do it left to right. So in that particular case, we've Span been... The Spaniard, the Spanish producer is telling me that that's, she was told addition before subtraction. Maybe uh, it's well, only in Spain. There, there, there's kind of a, a sort of incorrect way of interpreting business in the correct way. And I can assure you, if you put this in your calculator, um, that won't give you five. So... It, let's do it because because subtraction addition are the same order of priority. Yeah. You do it left to right. So you're going to do the ten minus two first. Right. So that's eight. Plus, and then three, plus three is eleven. So it's actually eleven, not right. five. Now, if I put this into a calculator, because I've just got one calculator on my phone here, um, will it yep. automatically use Bidmus? Then is that what it will do? Yes, it, it should do. So so, as ten, long as you're... so so I do ten minus two plus three, it gives me eleven. There you go. Yeah, indeed. And my, my calculator I've got here also give, gave me 11. Okay. Interesting. Well, that's really interesting, isn't it? So 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 you would say in every in every scenario the the the, the multiple, sorry, the addition and the subtraction you just do it left to right no matter what. That's correct. But if you were to have like a mixture of addition, subtraction and multiplication, yes. you would still do the multiplication first. Yes. But once you've done that, you're correct. You just do it left to right rather than doing the addition necessarily before the subtraction. Ah, okay. All right. Well, that's fascinating. You know, I, I, was, I was talking to them this morning, the guys, uh, the, uh, the production guys, and I said, I, I can't imagine I'm going to have much to say about this. I'm going to do one sum, and that'll be the end of it. But, you know, as ever, Jamie, you've managed to uh, fascinate us with your, uh, with your interpretation of maths. It's great. No problem at all. Brilliant stuff. Jamie, thank you very much indeed. Are you taking off the rest of the summer now, then? Is that your, uh, is that your final furlong for us? Yeah, so it was a kind of staff training today. And then tomorrow we're just saying, uh, we're coming in to just say goodbye to the teachers. And I think there's a kind of um, cricket match going on, sort of staff cricket match. And, uh -huh. and that's it. Wow. Okay. Well, it's been a, f a funny old year for, 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 for everybody involved in education. So let's hope that uh, when we come back in September, uh, it looks a bit more like uh, the normal world that we would want it to be. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, Jamie, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's drfrostmaths.com is where you find uh, Jamie Frost, the maths teacher, finalist for the Global Teacher Prize 2020. Well, that's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, see, I didn't really, I didn't think it was interesting. I have to say, I will confess that when we start, when I was explained, as it often is explained to me, because you have to explain it to me in words of one syllable, because I'm not always that bright about these things. I just thought, I can't imagine why I would want to know any of this. But then now I do know it, I, I'm, I'm quite like it. I might spend the rest of the afternoon doing a load of sums. <laughs> for no apparent reason. This is Talk Radio. Online, on DAB, 
and on the Talk Radio app. Talk Radio.